As I promised you earlier, I told you I had very insightful guest today. And it's no other than um, Badebo Rudzvaivo, who is the Bonitera candidate for the Labour Party in Lagos State. Happy to be here. You're welcome. Pronounce, you pronounce my new energy. <laughs> Badebo. You understand, you understand the mission. Very well, very well. I mean, to, to not start the show, just tell our viewers about yourself, you know. We've seen you, those that follow politics know that we have seen you in this game for a while. Mm. So we know you, we know what you stand for. Yes. Getting the people okay. about governance, okay. mission building. Why mm. do I even need to vote? Yeah. Why am I voting for bad people, for instance? Mm. You know, what is, what is he offering me? Why, who is he? What does he have? What's his antecedent? So just okay. Tell us, you know, briefly. Well, yes. uh, my name is Badibo Rodsvaivo. I am an architect by profession, a politician by passion. Um, I'm 39 years old. I got my degree from MIT and I started this process via activism. It was in that moment when the senators came out to address us and I felt that none of them took into consideration what we're complaining about. And this was something that affected everybody. The driver, the bus conductor, the bank MD. Genetic modified foods is linked to illness, is uh, linked to us losing our export partners, especially in the EU, that have um, regulations against that type of agriculture. In a country where you barely have any regulations, barely have any regulatory monitoring bodies that can actually scientifically analyze what is going on in that agriculture system or the health system, I felt that it did not make sense for our food sovereignty, for the healthcare of our people, policy making and governance. Because then when you have the activists come out to complain and the arguments put the people first and the interests of the people first, those politicians will be more likely to listen, mm. right? So I contest, I not just come out and say I want to be, I went to contest for local government chairman. In what local government is this? Ikeja, right. under the Koa party. And I was building structure and campaign at the same time, which is one of the hardest things to do. Mm. Um, after that, I got more, I got a significant experience of politics in Nigeria. Mm. And I joined the PDP party because from the local government level to the House of Rep level to the governorship level, everything I dis detest about Lagos the has been... Yes, it has been their responsibility. So I joined the PDP, fortunately, I, um, and with favor, of party, the party and party leaders I ran for Senate in 2019. I had the highest number of opposition votes in the state. Um, after at Siku, it was me. And um, it was a good run. Got That's Lagos West. Lagos West. Got the opportunity to build a significant network of friends and um, allies across that um, central district. And then build structures all the way <laughs> I did not go to Dubai. You know, I built the Our Lagos Movement, which is about galvanizing you to get involved in people along, pulling people into the process. And then I was gubernatorial aspirant in the PDP. We drew based on agreements that were made, agreements were reneged on, and I joined the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. So some people might say I've moved parties significantly, but always remember that. might say you have actually moved. But there's a consistency there. I'm never going to the APC. <laughs> <It's consistent. laughs> you see yourself in the APC. The only thing that could ever make me join the APC is if every party in Nigeria said they were against restructuring. Against restructuring. It was the only party that was truly for restructuring. Then I might consider or I'll just jack my I'll just say I'm not doing it again. So does that mean that the cornerstone of your ideology for Nigeria right now is restructuring? Yes, I think on the long term, this country can only move forward if we restructure it. The way it is currently structured is that the most of us, um, it, it's a system yeah, let's, that... Let's talk about wastefulness, for instance. Yes. What, what is it that is it that, that's wasteful? Oh, so much, so much. The way the government system is extremely efficient. You have a Senate, you have a House of Rep, you have a State Assembly. It's a right? more legislature. And, and no, if, even if it is, I mean, we had, a, we had a parliament at a point and we're managing Nigeria. One, we even say we're managing Nigeria better mm. until the whole 
um, problem started in the southwest region between Awolo and Akintola. But, I mean, England, Britain is one of the most sophisticated countries in the world, at least top 10. They have a parliament. Yeah, but I mean, you can say have the parliament, but that, I don't necessarily think that that system of government gives you full representation. In the sense that, for instance, right now, Boris Johnson, who has just left, mm -hmm. now you have Liz Truss mm -hmm. right there. She was not voted to be prime minister. No, she was not. She's only basically the leader of the party. Yes. Now she's representing the entire Nation. United Kingdom. So yes. I don't think that gives but us... Then, but then we shadow cabinets, we shadow cabinets, and people also have responsibilities. There's a check and balance situation that's set up there. Mm. Yeah, we're supposed to have a political class that are servant leaders. Right, mm. that are not showing off with these big convoys, and you know, and that's what's very endearing. New kind of politics that I'm extremely attracted to, because I feel that that's the only way Nigeria can move forward. Because we, we might not know it, but subconsciously, these people set the trend for what happens in society, mm. in terms of our morality, in terms of in terms of what we think we can get away with. Like they literally set the tone, the culture. In the, in the country and in a lot of states. Absolutely, absolutely. So does that mean that you also carry your bags yourself? I should be carrying my bags so myself. When you become governor and I see you at the airport. No doubt, no doubt. That's fantastic. I mean, so you've come from COA to PDP to labor. And now you're, now you're in labor. And we all know that labor is not necessarily a strong party in Lagos State. Even significantly, and if you still think that they were living under a rock on Saturday, How people you were mobile. Did you see the amount of people that came out across Lagos simultaneously, from Lekki to Suleri, to Ikeja, to Amordofi. And these were centers where people came to. The most important thing, I've been in politics for some time now, so there's some things I've learned. Mm. When people can come out without you giving them any money, without any promise you give them, Each of those one people. Because you need to understand something. There are people that have registered, but they're not going to come out under the sun of to course. rally with you. They'll come out and vote, but they'll not come out and rally with you. So they'll come out and rally with you. Rally with you. Rally with you. Under that sun, right? Because you see, this thing that people need to understand is a new politics. It's a new day. People that like came out like that. No, people this. that came out like that. Because I saw them. I saw them. People that came out like that. You know, they are shouting Obi Obi, yes, but it's not so much. It's Obi, but it's also not so much about Obi. It's an idea of what people want, and Peter Obi epitomizes that. They want a situation where they no longer have to hold their nose to vote for a person mm. because the person is linked to cocaine or massive corruption, and they have to just ignore that part of it and just say, "This person is the best that we have to deal with, so let's just vote." They no longer want to subdue their mind to, you know, there's a time where people were saying in 2015, they don't care if um, um, President Buhari doesn't have a certificate, even if he has a NEPA bill, they'll vote for him. Now, I hope they've seen where some of the certificates take the country to. Cerebral capacity matters. People want a leader that's intelligent. Do you think Buhari's not intelligent? Well, he might be politically intelligent because he eventually became president and led for eight years. But by the indexes of how he has ruled this country, I do not believe he has the mental and intellectual capacity to have governed this country.